Hola, y'all. Happy Saturday. It is beautiful. I mean, my yard's not beautiful because we haven't mowed or anything. Um, but it's spring. Like, the birds are chirping. It's just really nice. So, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. We've had a ton of rain and my yard is flooded. So, there's that. Got a lot of outside and yard work that needs to be done. But, I have moved one piece of furniture off of the porch. I don't know that you've noticed. You know, I've had this furniture on here waiting to sand it and paint it for over a year or about a year, something in that vicinity. And I've been waiting for the right time. So I finally got one of the large pieces off the porch, sanded it, and I've got to paint it. But I do have it in the house and I'm working on getting the other ones. So slowly but surely. Anyway, I studied a lot this week on very different topics, um, a lot of different stuff. So I wasn't quite sure this morning what I was going to bring to you. But I finally settled on this, and I'm not sure what I'm going to title it when I put it out. But I, I think I want to talk about God picks the vessel. God chooses the vessel. Okay? Let's jump into it. John 7 and 5. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Now, we're in the New Testament, and we are talking about Jesus here. And we see... God himself, robed in flesh, came to earth, right? And he performs miracles. He is, you know, he's healing people. He's teaching. He's doing all these things. And there's all these people that are believing on him. Of course, we've got the mad people, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day who don't like him. But we've got another group. Then we have people who do love him and do recognize him for as much as they can see who he is. And then we have people who do recognize him as God himself. But then we have another group of people. And these were people that did not believe on him because they knew him. And that's kind of where I want to focus my conversation today, which might seem strange and we might not be here very long, but it was just something that as I was reading this week, I picked up on. It's something that we know, but I wanted to talk about it for a moment. God chooses or God picks the vessel. So people looked at where Jesus was from. And maybe you maybe you and I are going to be able to relate to this. That's Marley. People looked at where Jesus was from his whole life to try and invalidate his ministry and his words. Even his own community and family did not believe who he was and what he came to do. They were astonished at his doctrine and what he had to say, but they lacked spiritual wisdom to understand what his words meant. They were blinded by what they had already decided about Jesus. Now, this is coming from the fact that, well, I have a connecting scripture for you too, but Jesus is not the only one that has suffered in this area. This is something that's super common. We see it today. That's why I wanted to talk about it. In Luke 4, 24, it says no prophet is accepted in his own country. There is something to this being used by God in an area where people know where you're from. I heard so beautifully put around Christmas time, Brother, Brother Lugo was ministering at our church and he was talking about the Christmas story. And, you know, everybody typically wants to do the beautiful side of the Christmas story. And maybe even they talk about the hardships. But I had never heard anyone expound upon the Christmas story like he did. Because he talked about how evil the world was when Jesus came into it. The time in which God chose to come into this world was under King Herod's rule. And he began to talk about just how awful King Herod's rule was. How many babies were slaughtered during that time. How many people were murdered for speaking out against that leadership. Like, it was... A political mess it was just not a good time it's not like he chose a great time in history to be born he chose a difficult time in history to be born he chose a dangerous time in history to be born it's almost like God himself chose some of the most adverse circumstances to let us know number one I'm gonna endure what you have to endure to show you that it can be done and to show you how to navigate it and I want you to and, and number two like 
He didn't come down here to get special treatment. He came down here to be the lowest of the low. To relate to, I believe, everybody and to, you know, to be that example. But he talked about how the different parts of the Christmas story were really horrible. And, um... But he also brought up a, uh, he also brought about an excellent point that I don't think we think about enough. The situation with Mary being pregnant. We believe it. We know it's true. We read the Bible in hindsight. But if you were living in that time, there is probably honestly very few people that believed her story. It had never happened before in the entire world. Think about this. Right now in 2024, if something happened, that had never happened before in the entire world. Even religious people would be like, not possible. You know it, and I know it. We would not readily believe something like that. Something humanly, physically impossible. I'm not just talking about a miracle. I'm talking about a person having a baby who has never been with a man. We would not give credit to that. We would not be, oh, okay, we accept it. God impregnated this woman. That is what happened, but we would not have accepted it. I don't believe that we would have. It would have taken some major spiritual intervention. So what Mary did, because there wasn't angels appearing to everybody to let them know what was happening, just to the people who needed to know. Hold on to that nugget. The angel only appeared to people who needed to know the validity and the truth of what was happening. Everybody else is expected to believe. So, Jesus grew up with a mother that had him out of wedlock. That's what Jesus grew up with. Jesus' reputation was that he was the son of a woman who had not been clean or pure and did not wait. Okay? Why are you telling me this, Jesse? Well, let's fast forward to his ministry when he gets to his 30s. And they invalidate it because they know who he is. Isn't this just the son of some carpenter? And maybe they don't write it in scripture, but you know the whispers are there. Yeah. And didn't they have him out of wedlock? Now he's going to come and tell me something. Now he's going to come and try to perform miracles. I don't think so. I don't think so. I know who he is. He can't be a prophet. Prophets don't come out of that area of the world. I know his mom. He can't be called. I know his dad or his dad. He's not anointed. He's not special. My family grew up with their family. Have you, do you know? Have you been around them? Have you seen what they used to do? I mean, I'm telling you. And the Bible tells us, not me. The Bible tells us that even Jesus himself had to deal with people they did not believe the things he said, the, the things that he did. They did not believe that God sent him. They didn't believe in his ministry. They wouldn't listen to a word he said. They didn't support him in places they asked him to leave. They would mock him, and ultimately they crucified and killed him. But that was because that was the plan of God, okay? But then, look at me and you. It is still difficult. And I'm going to give you this very probably lame example but I was thinking about uh TikTok right and I saw a lady on there who was doing good on TikTok and she just said you're gonna have to accept the fact that the people that know you are gonna think <laughs> you're ridiculous like if you can't move past that point then you're not probably gonna do very well on the platform because you cannot care what they think and um and I don't think that it's haters or anything. I just think that people see a side of you that you've always had. And you've never had a way to express it. Like you've never had a creative outlet. And then all of a sudden this app comes along. And there's a group of people just like you who want to provide entertainment or teach or whatever it is you like to do. Lip sync or dance or, you know, whatever your thing is. And then all these people who don't live with you, who are not around you every day who don't really, really know you, but they know you, or even the people who know you, but you've never revealed what's in your heart. Like, I've had a passion for this forever, but you've held it so close because you never had a way to express it. Okay, these people get on this platform and they're able to express themselves authentically and grow an audience. And what's difficult is a lot of people don't do it 
because they are concerned about what their community feels like. Not not the strangers. That's that's not the ones that that's not the ones that bother you. It's the ones that your neighbors or your church family or your real family. And like I said, it's not that they're haters. I'm sure those are there, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about being hateful or rude. I'm just talking about people who don't understand you because they know you and they've never seen that before and they don't know where to put you anymore. Like what category do you go in? I've known Jesus his whole life. I've ate dinner with his mom and dad. I watched his dad and him build a table. Now he's walking around healing people. I don't know what to do with that. Where do I put him now? He used to be the guy that lived three, three doors down. And now he's the son of God. What do I do with that? He can't be the son of God. I watched him. I watched him grow up. So there's something to that. And Jesus faced it. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph was the youngest of his family. God called him. God gave him dreams to save his family. That was his calling. To go before them into Egypt and to make sure they did not die in the famine that was coming. That was his purpose. He saved his family. That was his, his family did not appreciate it. Who do you think you are? You're the youngest. You're the baby. Spoiled brat. Daddy's favorite. I know you. Get out. We don't want you. We don't want your dreams. We don't want your ministry. We don't want your passion. I know where you're from. I know the easy road you had. I don't want to hear a word you have to say. Matter of fact, I don't want to hear it so badly that I'm just going to try to eliminate your voice completely off the planet, not just in my life. Not accepted of his own community. Not accepted in his own family from his own brothers. Look at David. I could go on and on and on, and I'm not going to do that to you. I could, I could probably, and I'm just naming the big ones. I could go and name you small characters in the Bible who dealt with the same thing. David dealt with the same thing. He was the youngest, not even called to come to the table. I mean, it can't be. The prophet don't want him. I've known him his whole life. My little brother, all he does is take care of sheep in the field, play his little harp, write his poems. What a nerd. He can't be a king. He hasn't even been called to be a king. You will probably face the same criticisms, the same doubt, the same loneliness, the same invalidating of your ministry and calling from your family, from your friends, your church, and your community. And not because they're horrible people all the time, but because they don't have spiritual eyes to see beyond the physical and to recognize what God has put in your heart and on your life. And sometimes they're not supposed to because it's really not between them and God anyway. Your calling, your ministry, your ability to work for the Lord is all between you and Him. And we have to learn like Jesus did, like Joseph did, like David did, like Noah did. <laughs> we have to learn to let it go and go forth and listen to the Word of God. We have to listen to His voice speaking and not the noise around us that says, I don't believe you. I know you. That's impossible. I know your family. It's impossible. I know your past. It's impossible. Shame on us. Shame on us. But, you know, if we do that and it happens and you know, it happens and I know it happens. It's happened to me. It's probably happened to you at some point being invalidated because somebody knew you or thought they did and they might. But again, some of the things God whispers to our hearts in the middle of the night, in our dreams, in our prayer time, and when we're alone are just like those angels that appeared to Mary and Joseph. He didn't appear to everybody. He didn't tell everybody. They're just for us and they will come to pass and manifest at the right time. But do not be discouraged or dismayed if you're not accepted in your own place, you're in good company because neither was Jesus. But it didn't stop him and it shouldn't stop us. And this is what I ended with. We don't get to pick and choose who God uses. And we don't have the right to invalidate God's word in their life just because of what we know. To understand 
And here's the point. To understand and to recognize calling on someone's life, which by the way, is not our job anyway. But we must be looking through spiritual eyes and not the physical, not our human knowledge, but through the spiritual. Keep going. We got this. I will see you next Saturday.